So this entire month, I'm going to be talking about the purpose of a family, the purpose of a family, and God created family. Man, anybody thank God for your family? Oh, yes. Everybody doesn't have the same experience, but man, I, man, God bless me. I have a tremendous family. Um, raised with uh, cousins. We were like siblings. My mom, a twin sister that here this morning, my uncle, my big mama sitting right there. You know you got a great, uh, a good grandmother when everybody call her big mama. So that's, I got a real big mama there and man, my parents and just the Lord bless uh, me with a great family. Everybody doesn't have that same experience. But even if you don't have that experience, God will bless you with family, with friends that become like family. Everybody needs that support system. And here's the challenge. Many of us are dealing now with things that we didn't get in families as adults, that God wants to heal so that we can move forward in life. Uh, I had a tremendous experience this week. Last Sunday, man, were you guys here last Sunday? God moved in in a oh, tremendous yeah. way last Sunday. And then this week, I was with young people all week. Um, there's a couple that's joined our church. I hate to put people on the spot, but Krista, can you wave your hand? Krista's the area director for FCA, and so oh, yes. she, she headed up this uh, camp, the middle school part, and it was a high school part, uh, point. And man, there was kids, hundreds of kids, they were worshiping God. They were athletes. They were just doing tremendous things. And I had a great experience there. But one of the services, there was a group of guys. I guess they didn't want to be in service. And they were in the back. And we were talking to them, about 10 guys. And man, they were sweet guys, great potential. But they just had challenges. And when we were talking to, to, to them, one of the questions I asked all of them, I said, hey, how many of y'all have a father in your life? Not one of them had a father anywhere present in their life. Um, they had that father wound that was there. And they, I said, who's raising you all? Some of them said my grandmother, my aunt, some of them my mother. This is not a shot against single-parent homes because, ladies, can I tell you what? Y'all are holding it down in this season. I have seen ladies holding it down financially. I've seen them holding it down educational-wise. I want to give it up to you. Hey, y'all don't call me old school or shoot me when I say this. But when you watch this, when you see couples who are not married move in together, guess what normally happens? That guy normally moves in with the lady. Because the ladies are holding it down there. Yeah. So I want to celebrate, ladies, you guys holding it down in this season uh, of your life. But God's design is for two people to come together and raise um, a family together. But when you have wounds, crazy things happen. I read this statement. Matter of fact, it was Trent's brother, Chris Pointer, who I heard say this statement. He said, the child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to fill its warmth. A child who is not embraced by a village we burn it down to receive its warmth. Many of us have things inside of us that we do to get attention. We see it in children. Many children act out. They don't even realize they're doing it, but they want some type of attention. Correct me. Uh, embrace me. And if a person is not accepted in a village, they feel like an outcast. They suffer with rejection issues. And I want to tell you in this room, if that is you today, I want to tell you that God's going to surround you with a group of people that is not going to force it on you. But here's what I love about God. You ever seen the scripture where Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock? Now, he could kick the door down if he want to. But he will stand there waiting on you for an opportunity to come into your life. And God said, I'm going to have opportunity knocking at your door through friendships. But here's the reality. When we have these gaps in our lives, many of us are grown adults that we act out in a way that's not even our numerical age. Immaturity shows up. We get disconnected when things don't go our way. Some of us are very needy because of things we didn't get. Some of us will hide and then get mad at you because you can't find us. We don't understand intimacy. Intimacy is into me, you see, and it's a two-lane uh, two uh, two highway. You got to want to see into me, but I got to let you see into me. I got to want to be known, and you got to want to know me. And many of us are one-sided. We, we want to look into people, but we don't want people looking to us. We suffer with these things, many of us, because of the gaps that happen as, you know, the, as a result of family things that happen. But let me show you what happens. Gaps are created by what people won't do. Some people are just negligent. They can, but they won't. They are not present in people's lives. They should be. But for many reasons, they choose not to step up to the plate. They choose not to do whatever, and it's just negligence. And there's a gap that's created when somebody just won't be there. Somebody, you, there's a sense of rejection. Somebody just will not fulfill their responsibility, whether through immaturity or something else. Some people um, create gaps because they can't do through ignorance. I am sure over the course, Isaiah 15, over the course of his 15 years of living, and I had great parents and I had great family that I saw examples of manhood, but I'm pretty sure I've created some wounds in his life that I'll have to will work through and all that stuff like that. 
not because I did it on purpose, but because I just didn't know certain things. Barbara was telling me one day, our godson Carter's with us a lot, and it was a shot, but it was true. Like, it was a shot of reality. She said, you're a whole lot more patient with him at this age than you were with Isaiah when he was that age. And I thought about it. No, I wouldn't. You know how you want to argue back first. But here's the reality. I, I couldn't. She's right. But when I look at the person I am now, I'm not the same person I was when he was four. Life is different. Man, at that time, I was trying to balance a full-time job, pastoring the church. Financially, things were tight, trying to be a husband, trying to be all those things. So, of course, I was short when I had stuff going on at work and coming home and got to be a father. And this little joker just running around like, what do you want? <laughs> no, we, we didn't think about this. Life can be stressful. Yes. So, of course, and the reality is all of us, you're not the person you were five years ago. That's why our grandparents are different as grandparents than they were as parents. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, looking at mom and daddy, you know you wouldn't let us get away with stuff like that. But like, you, this is what happens. You realize what's important the older you get. And sometimes we create rooms out of ignorance that God has to expose to us. And watch this. When you know better, you do better. And some of us have these wounds because, listen, sometimes people don't have the opportunity to do certain things. My parents are doing, they're raising my niece because her mother's deceased. I'm pretty sure if they wrote, they'll do it. But if they wrote the thing out, that's not how they would have planned. They would rather be grandparents and parents. Yeah. Sometimes people get blocked. They get canceled. Sometimes people have uh, relationship problems and they get punished. Because you were not a good boyfriend does not mean you not, may not be a good father. Because you were not a good girlfriend does not mean you're not going to be a good mother. So things happen where people can't be in people's lives. But when that happens, it creates gaps and God has to send healing in. Yeah. You know how God sends healing in? Others step up and step in because God puts it on his heart, on their heart. And the same grace that is on the person who was supposed to be there on there switches to the person who's filling in that role. How many of you are glad for people who God sent to step in your life to fill the gaps that need to be filled? God will never, if he is God, he will never leave you without. God always has somebody willing to step in even when somebody won't. God has somebody there waiting on you. And then teaching occurs. You learn how over time I am opening myself up to teaching. Just because I can preach a sermon don't mean I'm a good father. Just because I can preach a sermon don't mean I'm a good husband. There are things that I am still learning. That, do you know that there are people who preach and don't live up to the standard they preach? And y'all immediately think about sin. Now, I'm talking about the level of mastery of the knowledge that you're teaching. There are teachers teaching accounting who are about to get put out of their apartment. Just because you master something to articulate it doesn't mean you live it out. So God teaches you to grow up to the level of your... You all right in here? So for every person that has any type of gap in your life, and while I'm teaching this, it could have got emotional, it could have got sensitive, whatever. I want to show you this. God wants to heal you. And here's how God heals you. He restores you. And you got to let go of the bitterness to do this. And here's the reason. You cannot get revenge and restoration in the same tone. If you're looking for revenge, God will never restore you. If you're looking to pay back the person who caused the damage, it doesn't create room for God to restore you. I want to tell you to open up your heart this morning and let God restore you so he can paint the picture of what family should be in the name of Jesus. You all right in here? So here's my main idea today. My main idea today is this. My destiny is designed to be fulfilled by doing family God's way. Now I'm going to, be, I'm going to have a disclaimer here. Your destiny is not held hostage because somebody won't choose to fulfill their responsibility. God's ideal way is a certain way, but if some, watch this, you can't make somebody love you. At some point, you get, beg, you get tired of begging people to stay in your life. And let me tell you a truth. You don't have to beg somebody to stay that don't want to leave. God will put people in your life that want to be there. And watch this. You don't have to suffer a lifetime of rejection by somebody who doesn't want to be in your life. God will never allow your destiny to be hijacked by some fool who won't live up to their responsibility. Well, you all right in here? I think I'll already say by saying fool. The Bible says fool. All right. All right. I won't say them other words. Just say about All right. And here's the reality. My failure in family or the experience I have of somebody else's family does not change God's goal of what a family should be. I'm going to give you God's original design um, for this earth. Do you guys not know the very thing that God created after he created heaven and earth was not a church? He created a family. And when Jesus came, do you know what he came to reinstitute? Family. 
Romans 8, 16 says, his spirit bears witness with our spirit, not that you're church members, but that you are a child of God. So God says, I gave you a biological family, and now you got a spiritual family. I used to get so embarrassed when we were growing up because everybody was sister and brother we went to church with. So we would go to Walmart. They'd be like, hey, sister so-and-so. And people ask me, is that your sister? No, I, it's a long story. They say, that's brother so-and-so. That's mother so-and-so. That's your, how many moms you got? I'm like, I don't got but one mother, but we call people brothers and sisters. You know what? We could get back to that. We could get back to, I don't care what color you are, black, white, yellow, brown, whatever color you are. If we are all washed in the blood of the lamb, we are brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. Nudge your neighbor and say, you my family. Say, what's up, fam? So let me show you, there are phases that God takes mankind to, through to create family. First one I'll start with this is mankind. Genesis 127, it's there on the bottom of the screen. If that's too small, you can find it there on your smartphone or your Bible. But it says this, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Rip, do you mind standing for it? Deacon Rip now, can you mind standing for a moment? Deacon now. On the front of his shirt, it says male man. There are two versions of mankind. There is a male man. There is a female man. We are, as male and female, everything that God would want to be on the earth. Say this with me. I am everything that God would want to be on the earth. Thank you. So God blessed man, male and female. No one is more blessed than the other. The female is not more blessed than the man, and the man is not more blessed than the female. Matter of fact, they're both the same uh, man and woman. Woman is nothing but a man with a womb. So you have a wound man, and God's blessed both of us. Verse 28, he says, he blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. That uh, that, that could mean have a lot of children, but it also means be productive in your week. Look at your neighbor and say, what did you accomplish this week? Now, every week, you got to be fruitful. You, you want to you wanna accomplish something. You say, I don't know about this week. I had a rough week. I cussed 10 people out. Well, this week, go five. Get it down to five. Then the next week, we're going to go to two. All right? You just got to start somewhere. We're going to have a fruit. Somebody said, that's my, you're going to be fruitful this week. Be fruitful and multiply. Multiply means I discover who I am and reproduce it on the earth. Then it says, feel the earth. And subdue it. Feel the earth means I walk out my divine mandate to reproduce who I am wherever I go, in my home, on my job, in my school, whatever I do, and then I subdue the earth. You know what it means to subdue the earth? It means to control the culture instead of letting the culture control you. Y'all, I don't care if gas get the $12.38 a gallon. I'm going to get where I'm going. I don't care if a state costs $32.33. I'm going to believe God that he's going to increase me with inflation or he's going to make a dollar holler. God going to stretch what I got or he's going to increase me in the name of Jesus. You can go around here complaining if you want, but I don't live by the earth system. The Bible says I, God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches, not in Bank of America, not in Regents, not in the Dow Jones, not in the Federal Trade Commission, but according to his riches in glory. Yes, sir. I subdue the culture by what happens in heaven. You all right in here? So I don't care. At home, I'm going to get where I need to go because I'm going to believe God for it. I'm not going to compromise the integrity of my life because what is going on in the culture. I don't care what the culture says. Now, I'm not going to live reckless, but God's going to supply my needs. You all right in here? I'm going to do what needs to be done because the culture doesn't control me. I control the culture. Then you have dominion. I ain't walking around here scared. But all these things, you know, I'm walking around here in the dominion of the Lord. So I'm going to show you that's what God said to mankind. But there are three different phases to create a family that God takes mankind to. The first thing is a male and female, and you dominate, you subdue, you replenish the earth. Every man has the potential. Now, Paul said he didn't. Paul said he's going to be lived single for his whole life. Jesus never got married. But many of you in this room, I can tell you, you don't have the gift of singleness. You don't have the gift. It's not that you don't mind being alone, but there are things going on inside of you that you, you need to be married. Y'all look at me strange in here. The gift of singleness is not on you. So, for, thank you. Yeah. So, for a man, a man transitions to become a husband. 
a man transitions to become a husband. A female transitions to become a wife. She doesn't become a wife because she got married. She was a wife material before she got married. You don't marry girlfriends, you marry wives. You don't marry boyfriends, you marry husbands. That's a decision. My parents are sitting right here, and my wife is sitting right here. She was not looking for their son. She was looking for their husband. Because, you know, the frustrating point many women have in life, many people, women feel, uh, feel like, I am married to a child. I am married to my, why do I always got to do this for you? When are you going to grow up in life? She's not looking for their son. She's looking for a man who made a decision to grow up and become a husband. Is that right in here? And it works on the other way as well. There are many men who feel like they married to some little spoiled brat that just whines every time something doesn't go that way. That man is not looking for the, the, your, their parents' daughter. They are looking for a wife. Y'all right in here? You're looking for somebody who made a decision to transition from man and woman to husband and wife. They need each other. This is God's design for family. Then they, according to a family, produce children. They produce children through the union of a man and a woman. Here's the reality. Many of us struggle with the balance here because you will find men that we're very good fathers, but we struggle to be good husbands. Very good mothers, but we struggle to be good wives because there is a balance that has to be created that when the children get here, I got to realize, I think marriage, you should have marriage-centered parenting versus parent-centered marriages. Kids need to know that we're not together because you're here. You are here because we're together. That makes sense here? They they just tolerating each other because we're here. No. The only reason you're here is because we like each other. (laughs) That makes sense here? So now watch this. I hear what you're saying. Every family is not produced that way. Sometimes there are single parents there that think that life happens, but it doesn't change God's design. And even if life happens that way, God has a way of surrounding you with what family should look like so that, you watch this, you can do things the way God wants them to be done. Is that all right? Is that making sense to you guys in here? Let me go to the next thing here. So for every role you have in life, there's a promise for God on doing it. The first thing, you... Have a role as a man and a woman. Can I challenge you that before you get married, before you think about becoming a parent and have children, get to know yourself. And if you're already married and you all have kids and you don't know yourself, watch this. The best gift you can ever give anybody is the gift of self-improvement. It is the gift of knowing where I am in life and where I need to grow up. You all right in here? I want to challenge you young men in here who are not married, you young ladies in here who are not married. Man, get to know yourself. Get confident in yourself because if you don't, your identity will become who you're married to and it will become who you're the parent of. And she is more than Jason's wife. I am more than her husband. I am more than Isaiah's father. But because before any of that happened, I had to know who I was and who I am produce those things that I'm doing in life. Let me show you this. What can happen if you don't know who you are? Your spouse or your kids can become your idol. And you will get things out of priority because your identity is based in one of y'all right in here. God said, I want to heal you. I want you to know who you are so you can begin to graduate to these stages of life. But let me show you the promise. The first promise he made to mankind is Genesis 128. You know what God says? And God blessed them. We can go home right there. Because when the blessing of the Lord is on your life. You can lose everything today and have it back tomorrow because I'm blessed. When the blessing of the Lord is on my life, it doesn't matter who likes me or who doesn't like me. God will cause me to prosper in the land of my affliction, and the hand of God is on my life, and God can do anything through me. Somebody say, I'm blessed. blessed. So you realize you're blessed, and then there's a blessing for marriage. Marriage, Proverbs 18.22 says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor with God. All the ladies in here say, I'm a good thing. thing. Come on, ladies, say, I'm a good thing. thing. Say it again, I'm a good thing. thing. Now watch this. It said, when you find a good thing, you obtain favor with God. Both of you have the favor of God on your life. When the favor of God is on your life, God will move things at a pace that you never imagined. Favor is like a shield, and when the enemy brings stuff at you, he cannot touch you because the favor of God is on your life. You know what the favor of God looks like? I I pledged uh, fraternity. 
uh, in college, I pledged Kappa Alpha Psi in the spring of 1998. And I had a Honda Accord that I put the emblem on the front trend and on the back. And everywhere I met, I was a proud member of KSI. And just so happened, we were stuck in traffic one day. And this police officer, he, I guess he was a Kappa II, he saw our license plate there on the front. He pointed at us. I said, oh, God, we must be in trouble. Escorted us around and said, y'all can go on through. When the favor of God is on your life, he will give you special permission that when everybody else is stuck, you just keep on moving. When everybody else is going through, you just keep on moving. Why? Because the favor of God is on my life. Somebody say the favor of God is on my life. Favor ain't fair, but it sure is fabulous. Why do I not look like what I've been through? Because the favor of God is on my life. So you get favor through marriage. Parents, there's a promise for us with our children. I, Psalms 127.3 says this. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Children carry our legacy forward. They are legacy carriers. We are generational curse breakers. And if we don't have a legacy, we start one and pass it on to our children's children. And it said the fruit of the womb is a reward. It is always a blessing when the womb is pregnant. God said children are not a burden. Children are a reward from God. You all right in here? God may not have planned your entrance, but he planned your existence. Do you not know, ladies, you are born with every egg you, ever, you will ever have. And males are born with the ability to produce seed. So God put purpose in you from the beginning. Now, how that purpose got here may not have been planned, but it was planned. God planned that thing from the beginning. So that's, my, that's news for anybody in here who says, I don't know, my existence, I, I shouldn't have been here. This shouldn't have happened. No, no, God knew. He may not have planned your interest, but he planned your existence, and his hand is on your life. You'll be surprised with the people who struggle with their worth because of how they got here. I want to encourage you, your beginning does not have to determine your ending. That's right. I don't care how you start it, God will compensate for every deficiency in your life. Then he said this, they're like arrows in the hand of a warrior. I'm a warrior as a parent. So are the children of your youth. Arrows have a target. Arrows, you have to point and you have to aim. Arrows need resources. God is going to give me the resources, the strength, and the aim to get my child to the target that they need to get to. And I'm going to launch them into their destiny. And watch this. You cannot shoot crooked arrows in a straight direction. God will give you the ability to straighten up every arrow in your life. Every child in your life, their personalities are different, but God will give you the grace to straighten that thing on out so yeah. we can get where we're going. How many believe that in here? The last thing it says, they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with their enemies in the gate. That means our children, God says, I don't care what happens in their life, they will make us proud and not bring shame. They shall speak at the, at the, with their enemies at the gate, meaning they shall take territory in life, and the enemy shall not overcome them. It shall never overcome them. They shall be able to articulate their purpose, take ground in culture, because you launch them in a way. Listen, we don't do everything perfect, but we're not trying to get it wrong. And God said the return is going to be greater than what you sowed. God, there's a parent in here that's going through right now, and you're wondering, God, am I getting through? God said, take aim. I don't care what the enemy brings to distract it in your way. You focus. I'm talking to somebody in here. You take aim, and God's going to give you the strength to get them to where they're going. Who am I talking to in here today? There is a promise for children. Here's the promise for children. Ephesians 6 and 1. This normally gets read right before you're about to get a whipping. This is not a whipping scripture. This is not a threat. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Baby, you're going to obey me in the Lord. It's right. And now they're scared. Verse 2 says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Why does it tell you to honor your father and mother? This has nothing to do with them, but this has everything to do with your heart because you act like every parent, parent always acts honorable. I don't care the condition that you're in. If your mama's on the side of the road smoking crack, it is never right to dishonor her. You don't have to trust her with your wallet, but that don't mean you ever dishonor her. You never dishonor people. I don't care if you disagree. There's a way to disagree without being disrespectful. Yeah. I am 46, 45 years old, but to this day, if my mom and dad, I am not going, I cannot call them Wayne and Sheila for nothing. I feel bad right now for even saying that. <laughs> that there's something in me, and that, I could call them whatever, but honor is something in the heart. 
and I don't care how we disagree or what happens, there's, it's never right for me to dishonor them. I want to encourage you in this room. I don't care if your parents are as wrong as two left shoes. It is never right to dishonor them, call them out of their name, talk to them crazy. No, I'm going to do things right even if the situation isn't right. You all right in here? So I'm going to always honor because it says that my days may be long on the earth. That's not a threat. That's a promise that if I do things right. And watch this. Even if I do things wrong, even if I do things the wrong way, you know what I can always do? Grace and mercy will allow me to go back and repent and say, you know what, Daddy, I, should, I didn't say that right. You know what, Daddy, I was wrong when I did that. You know what, Daddy, I, I, took, my, I, I took advantage of this, and I want to apologize for that. Thank, everybody thank God for grace and mercy in here. Uh, y'all, y'all looking now. Does anybody look back at some things you did in your life, your parenting and things you said, and say, God, I need you to forgive me right now? Here's what we don't do. We don't harbor over the past. Honor is a present tense word that you come out of the past and you stay in the present. And I can sense many in this room, perhaps you have this animosity there uh, with your parents or things like that. I want to challenge you that God's going to give you the wisdom to make that thing right. Listen, you can't do nothing about tomorrow. You can't go back and do anything about what has happened. Only thing you got is today and you can start honoring today and God will take care of that's in yesterday. Y'all right in here? That's the promise for children. And if we honor our parents, our days will be long on the earth. I'll close with this and then I'm going to pray. There's a purpose for family. Family has a purpose in all of our lives. Matthew 3 and 16, Jesus was being baptized. And all the people were watching. And John the Baptist baptized him. And notice what happened. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And I always like to find humor in what I do. I don't, know what it was. I don't know what it was about Jesus and water, but he came up out that stuff immediately. You ever notice Jesus and water? You never see him swimming. He walked on water. He was at wedding. What did he do at that wedding? He turned water into wine. I don't know what he got a problem with water, but he came up out of that water immediately. Watch this. And behold, the heavens were open to him. Notice God speaking. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove upon, uh, lighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased. That word my, here's what every family provides, security. Son, identity, well pleased, affirmation. Every person needs this in life. Every person needs a covering, somebody to provide security while you grow. A covering is somebody who is loyal to you, They're not jealous of you. They cover you because they feel a love for you because they see your potential. They see what God's going to do in your life. And the reason why I think you have so many insecure people in this world is because we've not been properly covered. Loyalty is always going to be tested. And you're not loyal to me just because things are going good and you're there applauding me. Loyalty is tested when I have screwed up. I made the biggest mistake in my life and you still there to cover me and won't let nobody touch me. Here's the thing about family. We may argue with each other, but you better not step in and do this. Loyalty and covering says that's none of your business. There's some stuff that ain't a secret. It just ain't none of your business. There's some stuff families go through that do not need to be on social media. They don't need to be. No, you don't need to have nobody. You pray within your family. Because here's the reality. The people who are not under your covering, if you share certain things, they will never look at the people under your covering the same way. Because we know why? They don't love them the way that you do. When you got love for somebody, you go through the storm together. You go through the rain together. God got you. And you can fall out and fall right back in and be better for the so doing. Somebody say, I'm covered. So that's what we do in family. We cover each other. We cover our children. We cover our parents. We cover uh, our siblings, our cousins, our friends. If you go to this church, I got you covered. I don't care if your name is in the Times Gazette or the Daily News Journal. I ain't going to let nobody talk about you. We're going to get it together, but that's not the world's business. Because here's what I found out. The worst court to trap people in is the court of public opinion. No, no, no. You let God handle some things. So my covering, it's a security. Beloved son, identity. You don't start where you finish. You don't plant trees. You plant seed. And a covering allows you to grow up and be who God called you to be. It blesses me every Sunday because my dad can sit there and listen to me preach and not remind me of all the dumb things I've ever done. He watched me grow. He watched me learn. And he provided the covering to not judge me and to remind me of where I came from. But he celebrates me just like y'all do when I do good. 
But guess what else? He helps correct me into a son when I need it. That's what covering does. It helps you to grow into your identity. Let me tell you something. Someone really doesn't love you until they really tell you the truth. You really don't have a good friend until they just slide you a peppermint and you say no and they say, no, please. You don't. I was walking around somewhere and had a giant uh, booger hanging in my nose. And I looked in the mirror and said, all these people around here watching me and nobody said something. Now, a good friend will not let you make a fool of yourself. A good, watch this. A good friend is not going to co-sign with your story when it's not the truth. A good friend is going to challenge you and say, no, I, I, could it happen a different way? A good friend is going to cover you while you grow. A good family is going to do that because watch this. They see the potential in you. They see the potential in you. And he said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. Watch this. This is big. Well pleased. And Jesus had done nothing yet. He not healed the sick. Jacob, he not signed a Division I scholarship. Corbin, he hadn't had a gold record yet. Jesus had not walked on water. But before he did anything, the father says, I'm pleased in him. The challenge I think many of us have is that people only show up when we make all district. When you get the academic awards, or they only show up when you screwed up and they better correct you. Well pleased means I'm going to be consistent in your life. I am there before the awards. I'm there before the mistakes. I'm with you consistently throughout your life to make sure you get to where God wants you to be. He said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, which brings me to where I want. Thank you for watching our service today. We appreciate you visiting with us. We appreciate you sharing the word of God. And more importantly, we appreciate the work that God is going to do in your life as a result of your time with us. Again, if you're a first time visitor, go ahead and take a moment to connect with us. If it's your week to give, please, there are many options and ways that you can give online. If you'd like to just sow into our community and sow into what our church is doing, you can use one of these options. We have a vibrant ministry to the community and every dollar that you sow into this church will be used to better the people and the communities that we serve. Until next week, be blessed.